So you want to make money with the latest new craze that is the sneaker hype culture. Well, you've come to the right place, my friends. Uh, I am going to go through a few of the common ways to make money with this new currency that is sneakers. Uh, I will go through a couple of the ways that I uh, maybe have made money. I will also talk about other ways that other people that I know make money. And at the end, I am going to discuss my long-term strategy to do with sneakers. And more or less, that'll take us into what this channel is going to be about. First things first, sneakers have been super hyped lately. Uh, I'm sure you've heard on the news. I'm sure if you're here, chances are you know about all the money that can be made with sneakers. A lot of these collaborations, Kanye putting his name on a pair of Adidas's, uh, Travis Scott lending out his name and his uh, you know art style to Jordan. A lot of these things end up super overhyped, a lot of money to be made, and I'm just going to quickly talk about all the ways that I know people are making money off the sneakers, okay? So first things first, uh, despite the fact that what the media lets you know that all the hyped releases are all that matters, there is actually a lot of money to be made from straight uh, outlet cleaning. Uh, what I mean by outlet cleaning is a lot of people have been making money just going around scouring outlets day to day looking for good deals. Okay, uh, what this means is basically you don't have to go out and necessarily find the most hype sneaker out there. Uh, what it means is you want to go around and make sure that whatever prices sneakers are selling at currently at market value, uh, you can get them for cheaper. Okay, so for a good example, if you can find Air Force Ones, uh, let's say a white pair of low Air Force Ones, as long as you get them cheap enough, then uh, you can make money just reselling them on open market platforms, which I will discuss in a uh, future video. Okay, the gist here is you go around to your local Nikes on a weekly, on a daily basis, try to find good deals and buy as many as you can, right? So it's pretty straightforward, buy low, sell high. That being said, there are some uh, great profits to be made from outlets. However, uh, there are a couple of problems with this, in my opinion. Um, one thing we want to do or we want to talk about here on this channel is making lots of money, you know, enough money for us to make a living on, retire on, etc., etc. And just going around constantly through outlets, uh, buying things on credits, on debits, packaging it, shipping it out, etc., etc. It can become a lot of manual labor. And for this reason, I am going to call outlet resale as a non-scalable uh, way to make money on sneakers okay now of course you can scale it to some extent you know you can hire employees etc etc but for the sake of where we're going with this i am going to call outlets a non-scalable business okay furthermore this has become super competitive in recent uh, months i personally live in toronto i can tell you for a fact that uh it's such a competitive environment that not only do resellers all know each other at this point Nike employees directly know uh, who the resellers are. Nike employees are, as a matter of fact, being paid at some places that I know directly to provide information as soon as, you know, valuable things show up, hide them in the back of the stores, etc., etc. There's a lot of connections that need to be made. It's a highly competitive environment, okay? The next place you can make money is at the act of backdooring. Now, for those of you that don't know what backdooring is, basically backdooring is similar to a uh, computer programmer who might design a backdoor into their own software. Uh, by that, what I mean is they have access directly to the software or in the sneaker culture, or at least the sneaker environment they have access directly to a store's inventory before uh, release even. Okay, so what that means is basically if there is a very, you know, coveted shoe coming out, uh, as long as you know people at stores that are going to sell the shoe, uh, chances are that you might be able to get yourself a pair or more before the shoe even comes out, okay? This is by far the most uh, valuable way to make money on sneakers. Okay, um, there are shoes that retail for about $200 and can resell uh, for over thousands before they even release. Okay, so this is extremely lucrative. If you have such connections, go ahead and keep making your money. Okay, the problem here, of course, is that this is very hard to have these backdoor connections. Those of us that already have them are already making thousands and thousands of dollars. And those of us that don't, uh, there's just 
not much you can do. You can't just go online and, you know, put out an ad for I'm looking to buy shoes directly from uh, these stores, which, of course, these stores are not even technically allowed to be doing. But, of course, there's always a blind eye turned to these things. Okay, again, this is probably the most uh, the best investment you can make, but it is the toughest to get into. Okay, the more common thing that many of us that don't have backdoor connections and don't go around day-to-day uh, -day outlet shopping is just to uh, be super lucky and get a shoe on release uh, through, you know, straightforward methods, which means online, through, you know, Foot Locker, uh, foot action, East Bay, or through raffles in stores, through places like Champs, Foot Lockers, all those places, as well as all sneaker-related boutiques. Uh, many of them have, you know, raffles, quote-unquote. But again, there's many legitimate ways to actually win sneakers, or at least win the chance to purchase a lot of these sneakers. Um, so this is where ma most of uh, the masses end up getting their sneakers, okay? Chances are you're not going to hit on the most uh, coveted sneakers this way, but again, there's a lot of profit to be made just on buying more or less semi-lucrative shoes and then just making small profits on that. Um, the ROI here can be quite high, but for the most part, isn't going to be all that much since a lot of the really coveted shoes, there's going to be a lot of really smart people going for these things and really smart people tend to know what they're doing and they don't really play by the rules. Uh, so for example, a lot of really smart people are able to program a lot of bots with a lot of different addresses, with a lot of different credit cards associated with all those things, um, changing IPs automatically, etc., etc., which they are able to fool a lot of the, um, anomaly detection software on whether it be on Nike, on Foot Locker, etc, etc. Long story short, if the people that know what they're doing here, they can make a pretty penny. I've never been able to figure out the whole bots business, so I am not probably the best person to ask on this. And again, this could scale up if you know what you're doing with the whole automation of bots, making mass amounts of orders, but for the average person, you're basically going to get one or two shoes tops during a, any given release. The next thing I'm going to mention is going to be the flipping. Uh, this is a somewhat uncommon uh, practice, although there are, um, you know, every city has their own little like community of resellers, of consignment stores, people like that. Um, I know here in Toronto, for example, you have quite a few uh, common faces that wait around, you know, big flagship stores such as Foot Locker, Adidas Originals on the day of release. And they are basically just there waiting for people to purchase the sneakers, the people that got lucky. They make them a reasonable offer right as they pick them up. And then they end up reselling uh, the shoes on other markets. Uh, many, as a matter of fact, end up exporting these things uh, internationally where you can actually make even better better profits on a lot of the quote-unquote hype merchandise the problem to me is the vulnerability you have to fix okay fake sneakers are a massive massive business in itself and the last thing you want to do is buy fakes try to sell them and then basically get rejected right when you sell a lot of these sneakers, if you do end up selling fakes on a lot of the platforms we'll talk about later, you actually don't get any of your money back. So basically, everything you spent on that fake shoe is money down the drain. And again, this isn't going to scale necessarily as easy as we want to. Okay, so the last thing I want to talk about is sneakers directly as an investment. Okay, and there is a couple of different ways you can invest in sneakers. Uh, but before we talk about that, let's just talk about the word investments in itself. Okay, so without going too into depth about managing, you know, your own finances and investments in general and finance as a whole, uh, let me just quickly explain or try to give you an analogy to what investments are. Uh, the term stocks often comes up synonymous with investment. If that's how you choose to see investments, then so be it. But basically what we're trying to do is we're trying to let our money grow, our assets grow. And um, this is the best way, of course, to make a passive income, right? So investing in things like Apple and Google, those are your typical stock investments. Um, most 
rich people know to diverse, diversify their portfolios to the point where they're not just relying on companies, i.e. stocks, but they have things such as real estate, bonds, and as a matter of fact, even things like crypto, which most of my viewers, I suspect, are more uh, savvy with. Um, the point here is, again, you want to just have a diverse enough portfolio of assets. By assets, I mean basically what you're worth, everything monetary value that you possess and to do this you can diversify through things like the stocks that i said but also bonds crypto uh, things like bitcoin litecoin ethereum etc etc okay a lot of these things have been uh going up in value quite a bit as of recent so uh i'm not really going to talk too much about crypto here and of course real estate right properties have those properties make you money okay so where does sneakers fit into all of this well, believe it or not, sneakers can be thought of very much like stocks, okay? And why is that? Well, because there is or there appears to be some sort of an intrinsic value related to sneakers, okay? As a matter of fact, the whole hype behind all these sneakers has led to the invention of a lot of these open market platforms for these very sneakers, okay? What do I mean by open market platform? I mean a place where buyers and sellers can come together and they can basically bid to buy and bid to sell uh, these very sneakers, exactly like the stock market, okay? And so I wanted to show you guys this little infographic here on one of the websites I found of a Jordan 3 Black Cement and how it's actually performed versus the S&P 500 over a five-year uh, window okay the s p 500 is just basically the american top 50 companies in a sort of weighted uh, average this is basically just uh, a proxy for how well the companies in america are doing okay so this infographic here says that uh at some point over some four-year window the actual air jordan 3 here had a roi a return on investment of 162 percent which far out did the return on the market okay and this is again a measure of how the market is doing right over that four-year window the s p 500 actually did 67 percent returns okay so you can see here that the sneakers actually far outperform the regular average of the market uh, again this is just some website here where somebody figured out some random four-year window but let me go ahead and actually show you guys some data as of today. And I will load up here not only the S&P 500, but a couple of other indices such as the NASDAQ and the Dow. Again, the meaning of these things is outside the course of this video. Uh, but nevertheless, these are all indicators of the market, okay? With the NASDAQ being more highly related to the actual tech companies. S&P being more overall, so is the Dow, okay? So let's search up this black cement three. Here you have the most recent uh, version of that black cement three. And uh, again, I will mention what all these websites are later on. Uh, let me just log in here real quick. Okay, so here I am with the site loaded up and I want to scroll down to this very same shoe that we were talking about in the other article and I'm going to click the one year uh, chart here so I can see what's happened over the past year. Okay, as you can see today is October 3rd, October 21st. So you can see exactly a year ago today, the price of this shoe was $215. And today, or at least the most recent purchase you can see here was for $260. $260 divided by $215, as you can see, is a return on investment of about 21% for one year. Uh, on the other hand, you can see here the S&P 500 is at 3,000 today, 3,006 to be precise. And a year ago, it was at 2,755 you can see the S&P actually did only about 9%. NASDAQ here is 1890-ish. And a year ago, it was at 7468. 
you can see that has done about 8% and the down is at 25317 and that is about a 6% ROI okay so as you can see these shoes have in fact outperformed all three markets or market indices and you can see why this is highly uh, sort of valuable to us as investors okay okay so that's all I really want to talk about for today uh, the moral of this video is that I believe investing into sneakers holding them and then selling them once they've already accrued their value is the way to go why do I think this well I think this because you can scale these things very easily using a couple of platforms that already exist you can automate a lot of these things using some basic knowledge and more importantly I believe the sneaker culture to be here to stay and with that I want to leave you guys with a little Warren Buffett here quote that he had that I always remember from one of his documentaries and you can go ahead and read this I'm not really going to read it but the point here is that Warren Buffett mentioned something very interesting and he he gets this analogy from a baseball infographic here that he has on his wall in one of his Berkshire Hathaway offices he has this Ted Williams chart and all the batting averages he has at different points over the plate and of course the point here is that Ted Williams couldn't always force the pitcher to pitch a dead center to him where you can see that he would bat highest the beauty of investing is that you can do precisely that with investing right you don't have to swing at every pitch you can just wait and wait and sit at that plate all day and until that perfect pitch comes to you you can swing otherwise you can just hold on there is nothing to lose by uh, staying out of the market and that is the beauty right that is what Warren Buffett believes in that is why he is a billionaire and he has done nothing in life other than invest his money put his wealth where he believes it is valuable okay so you can go ahead and read that quote and hope you guys subscribe as I will be going more into depth about actual investments that I want to make I will be making a little let's say weekly updates on how I am doing I'm going to be investing in sneakers I will be posting the buys that I have the sales that I have and we will sort of track how my quote-unquote sneaker investment fund is doing and you guys can actually go ahead and help me along the way give me your opinions Tell me where you think is going to go up in value, what is going to go down in value, etc., etc. And I think we can have quite a fun time with it going forward. All right, guys, see you next time.